Hey yo, this is Dash, and um, out my garage again. Uh, it's later at night. It's after 10 o'clock, I guess. Probably close to 10:30. I'll check the time in a moment. I left my phone on the other side of the garage. But some progress here. If you notice, I painted the kick-ass smoker. Until I have a real name for the smoker, I'm just gonna keep referring to it as a kick-ass smoker. So I went around, I took all the accessories off, and I covered up everything. Alright, make sure you can still see. You know, this is Kirk's work of art here. But, <clears throat> so, I even tried to paint a little bit inside of the, um, the little warming box there. But as I put wood in and out, it took the paint right off. So, yeah, no worries. But, came around. On the back side, covered everything in at least one coat of paint. I actually went to the hardware store. I went to the hardware store, the Ace Hardware Store, and I picked up some more of these 15-ounce uh, cans. This is barbecue black, and it's rated to 1,000 degrees. Honestly enough, I painted this thing while it was hot, while I was cooking, because... That was the only time I was really going to be out here. So I've cooked on, on a smoker a couple times. Um, everything turned out, or everything so far has been turning out great. Um, I've pretty much, I have gone through all of the wood that Kirk gave me, and I've had to use some wood that um, I picked up. I, don't, I remember I may mention maybe I picked up on the side of the road not too long ago. The good and the bad, the good is, is, is it's oak, from what I understand. The bad is it is not seasoned, meaning it's not all dried out, uh, meaning there's a little bit more of a white smoke coming from the stack when I cook with it, which means the food has a little bit more of a pronounced smoke flavor, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um... I have been trying to limit the, the pieces going in. When they go in, if they're warmer, they don't smoke as much. One of the things I've learned, like when I start the fire, it's a huge plume of white smoke that you can clearly see, and that's bad because that, that'll impart too much smoke flavor. Um, but in order to kind of thwart that, or more or less in the meantime, while I still need to cook, but I don't necessarily have enough wood to fire the whole thing up. I thought about making a smoke or firebox out of uh, or a firebox for charcoal that will go into the firebox. What I found was I had some old grill grates from an old smoker that I burned through a long time ago. And I'm going to piece it together to try and... Uh, to try and make a charcoal box to fit inside of the firebox down there. So before I get started on that, because I've already started on that, but before I get in too deep, I'm going to actually start a charcoal fire so that by the time I finish making the box, I'll be able to throw the charcoal in there and then monitor the temperatures just as a test to see how it works out. Yep, I'm back. So. This is an example of This is an example of the grill grate I was trying to use. Okay? And then this is actually the grilling surface or a where you would cook the food on. The problem with this is there's a ceramic coating on this. It might actually be powder coated. Uh, the problem with that is when I was trying to weld it, okay, and yes, I just have a flux welder. Uh, it does take gas, but I don't have any gas for it yet. don't have a tank. So when I was trying to do the flux weld, I mean, yeah, flux weld, my welds turned out horrible, okay? Nobody laugh at my welds. I mean, they're holding the piece that's in there in there, but... They plain suck. So, with that being said, um, oh, and one of the other reasons why I mentioned the fact that there was a ceramic coating was because 
I had to grind the ceramic coating off in order to get a ground and in order to actually weld. So, because I couldn't keep doing that, I went out and found these little, these are actually supposed to be for wire, but for the all intents and purposes for what I'm going to be using it for, these little things worked out pretty well. So, as you can see, move this out of the way, my plan is to use the great the length of the grate and it, the, the problem is I only had three of these so I had to figure out how to make a box to hold the charcoal in this grate so what I decided was to keep the bottom the full length and width of the grill rate grill grate for the sides I cut one of the grill grates in half down the middle and then grafted the one half to the one side of the base now for the other side or the ends what I'm planning to do my workspace here is limited what I'm planning to do is to cut the grates down again and then kinda just put it on there like this like so okay and I'll just clamp it probably once down at the bottom and then on either side and that should be sufficient to hold everything that I need in place just to you know hold charcoal uh, I guess this thing is about six inches deep hold on I have a tape measure behind me that boy's good Rated right about six inches, five and a half inches deep. Okay. And the length on this thing is just over 18 inches, so it's at like 18 and a half inches. Alright. So I don't know what the cubic dimensions of that is, but it'll hold a pretty decent amount of charcoal. I mean, one of the things that I'm having, I won't say having a problem with or that I'm finding difficulty with is that the, um, the smoker as it is, I can start a fire, but then as soon as I start the fire, I have to, um, keep adding wood in maybe every hour or two. So hopefully if I can get this charcoal, um, uh, firebox set up where I can just, start some charcoal and then toss wood in for smoke it will help me to um, not have to add as much wood to it as much if that makes sense all right nonetheless let me put you on a tripod So what is crooked? It'll work. Much better.
for all intents and purposes, here is my little dinky charcoal basket for the fire box. Um, yeah, I think this will, hopefully this will work out. Let me go and, or let's go and check and see what the charcoal is doing. Hopefully by now. All right. Well, it's not fully lit yet, but that's fine. There's a fire going in there. All right. Well, <clears throat> back inside. So, over the past weekend, I used the smoker and there's some ash in there. I'm going to get the ash in there out with the handy dandy shop vac. All right. So, I'm back. I uh, filled up the charcoal box there. As you can see, it held a lot more charcoal than I thought it would. That is probably 12 to 15 pounds of charcoal right there. Almost an entire 20 pound bag of charcoal went into starting the chimney and filling up this box. I think this might work out a little better than I thought. So, uh, let me do the next logical thing. I'm going to go get the charcoal that I started. It's kind of hard to see, but I tried to put a little divot in the middle there. And when I put it inside, because of course it's not like even on the bottom, I don't know. If I did this again, I would probably just weld a box together. I have some angle over in the corner. I just didn't want to get the expanded steel. I figured I would save my money and use what I had laying around. Nothing like reusing something. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get the charcoal and uh, try to light this thing up. All right, so here's my charcoal. It's uh, pretty decently lit. And before I forget, the time is just about 11.15. Actually, it's 11.21. All right. Yes, it's hot. Yes, I have on welding gloves and uh, still touching this thing. It's hot as hell. All right. Note to self next time, leave a little more room at the top because I still have ash or charcoals and I can't get them in there right now so let's push some of these back oh. so far is just those charcoals down there and I'm already seeing smoke coming out the stack as well as the temperature on the thermometers is rising all right so we're at just about 11:27. I'm going to head inside and uh, monitor this from the comfort of my couch all right, so it's showing 115 degrees already inside of the uh, smoke chamber. So if you see, I have a probe in there and the probe is wireless. Uh, let's do this. There you go. See, it's at 117 degrees. And the way I usually set up my smokers, the way I usually set up my smoker is that I don't want it to get below 225 degrees. So one of the things that I noticed is that 
when my thermometer where it sits on the side of the smoker reads 200 and about 15 degrees these uh, thermometers here read at about 225 because of the difference in height and how the heat travels from here down around the bottom up and then across and then out the stack here okay so because of where the probe is coming in right here I set it to a lower temperature so that it'll actually give me a more accurate temperature at those those tell true gauges there so at this point all I'm gonna do probably get another refreshing beverage and wait see what happens all right all right I'm back and um, my digital thermometers one says 250 degrees and this one uh, says uh, 254 the difference between the two is this one is um, hooked straight up okay and this one is uh, wireless sort off slightly the one other thing I forgot to mention because of the fact that I don't have any water in the um, in the smoker right now the heat is going is hitting here first then traveling down and then coming back around so this side is actually hotter right now because of the fact that I don't have any water in the uh, water pan down at the bottom this is showing red at just about 250 degrees Again, this one is slightly higher because the heat that's traveling up and over is coming up and hitting that over there. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and actually can't see any. There is zero uh, like smoke coming out of the stack there, which is great. I can tell you that is pretty daggone hot in there. I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the water pan. And the reason I'm filling up the water pan is because usually when I'm cooking, you can kind of see the steam coming up from over there. Probably should have grabbed some light for you guys. But usually when I'm cooking, I'll let that fill up. So usually when I'm cooking, I do always fill up the water pan. Uh, the water pan will help keep a more consistent temperature inside of the smoker. That beeping you're hearing is the, uh, the thermometer. It has uh, obviously dropped under the temperature range where I have it set to. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the water pan and then I will uh, let you know what's going on in a little bit. All right. Well, I can honestly say I was not expecting this. The whole charcoal basket is lit. Yeah, pretty crazy. Now, I imagine that the reason a whole charcoal basket is lit is because I have the dampers wide open. Uh, maybe next time I will try and see about closing the dampers to probably about the same level that I would if I were uh, going ahead and making a fire in there with wood. So, nonetheless, I'm going to let it roll and see what happens. All right. I'm back out in the garage. It is now 1230 and the temperature from what I am getting from inside the house has stalled ex at exactly 205 degrees. Tell, tr tell true or rate right, right about the same amount. Right at about 200, a little over 200 degrees. <clears throat> so now this is the local one it's showing 208 what I'm gonna do so what I did was before I went in the house I throttled these back and you can see the diamond plate there and what the builder told me was if you count the diamonds you can kind of position the dampers to the point where you can throttle 
the amount of air going in. You can throttle the amount of air going in the smoker and accordingly throttle the temperature. So what I did just now was open up the dampers. Two more diamonds, so one diamond on each side. So for a total of eight diamonds for right now for my smoker, and I can already see the temperatures climbing. Okay. <laughs> he told me that this thing will climb temperatures fast. I'll say I didn't believe him, but the whole thing is I didn't believe him because I had to see it for myself. And already, it's at 210 degrees. Just by cracking those dampener, damp dampers, and this one's showing 200 and, well, just climbed 213. The big ones haven't reacted as fast. Okay, they're not reacting as fast. But I can tell you, all right, the digital one is up to 212 and climbing. So I'll check on this in about another hour, unless something drastic happens. And I'll be out here sooner than that. Yo, it's Dash, and um, back out in the garage. It is 1.30, and the temperature dropped down. So it was at 185. And what I did was uh, I opened the grates, or the uh, dampers, up to 10 total diamonds. That's more or less for me and Kirk. And you can see the temperatures right there. All right. Um, now, one of the other things I just did, you see the, you can't really tell, but the charcoal is down about half. And again, it's 1.30, so that's about two hours. And I think it burned up so quick because of the fact that in the beginning I had the dampeners wide open, so every bit of charcoal caught a flame. Yeah. So, next time I think I will put the dampers on, maybe, you know, I don't know, I'm thinking to myself as I'm trying to shoot this video. But nonetheless, um, we'll see what the temperatures do. I think they're just going to kind of taper off and fall off, you know, fall off because of the fact that um, the charcoal is pretty much burned out and it's starting to come on the downslide of the, uh, the heat. It's been two hours. Um, so, yeah, I think that might be it for the, for the heat in there. Uh, still, still dropping. I'm at, I'm showing 172. And uh, this temperature is dropping down as well. If I wanted to, I could take the water that's in there out, and that would help bring the temperature back up inside of the inside of the uh, cooking chamber. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm kind of just gonna see how this uh, how it tapers off and figure my next steps. All right, thanks. You back? Me? I'm back. So I went ahead and added more charcoal to the fire there. I also turned the dampers down just a bit. <clears throat> Turn the dampers down just a bit. Uh, you can see that's from adding the charcoal. That new charcoal is gonna, uh, it's gotta burn in basically. So you're gonna see some uh, smoke. You see fires rolling right along. Temps have dropped even lower than when I last reported. It is still, so I never actually went back in the house. It is probably about 145 at the moment. And the digital gauge is at 156. Now this will probably shoot up, or at least it should shoot up, as the uh, charcoal that I put in there. Um, comes to temp.